I hate to ask you, you know, to, to go back to what happened on Saturday night, but you know, going back to where were you? What were your thoughts when you first seeing you know people scrambling out of the stadium? Just just your accounts of, of what happened that night. Well, uh, you know, when it initially started, I didn't really have a clue what was going on. We were busy trying to get personnel on the field and off the field because it was in a, I think, if I'm not mistaken, right after a punt and and everything. And we were we were trying to uh, get those guys on and off the field. And then I noticed some people moving in the crowd, and and uh, then I it became pretty obvious something was going on when people started bailing over the side and. Uh, the officials on our sideline heard something about a shooter or a gun, so uh, we we started exiting our players to the to the locker room. At that point, uh, the problem we had was our locker room was locked and we couldn't get in it. And some of our kids went outside to to flee. And, and to their defense, you know that's what they're taught in schools. When you have an active shooter drill, you run if you have an avenue to run. You know, and the kids did a great job of that. And a lot of our kids helped other kids throughout the little kids and things like that. So really proud of that effort of them. But you know, it was a it was a scary situation, a, a sad situation, and a chaotic one, all rolled into one. You know, and uh, you know, I just hate that it happened at a, at such a great event in the Salt Bowl. I mean, it, it, this is a two great communities that come together and and put on a display of, you know, when you got thirty eight thousand people, that's phenomenal. You know, and and two two really good communities, two good schools, two really good football teams. I thought it was a great game all the way up until that point. Wish we could have finished the game. That's the sad thing about it is. Uh, you know, we didn't get to finish what was started. And, and there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. Coach James and I have talked about that all last week. You know, these guys look forward to it. As soon as football season's over with the talk of Salt Bowl, you know, they look forward to it for, for nine months out of the year, basically. And, you know, our, we've got a countdown uh, clock in there. And the guys have been counting it down, man, every day. They'll look at it and go, Coach, there's only 100 days till Salt Bowl. You know, and it, it's sad that we didn't get to finish it, you know. And, and Brian had taken a little lead on us there, but everybody that's ever been to a salt bowl knows it's not over until that last horn blows. And, you know, our kids were playing pretty well, we felt like, and Bryant was playing well. It's just uh, very disheartening and sad to see that we couldn't finish the game. Obviously, a lot of people have reached out to us, and just like our Facebook, our Twitters have just been blowing up, saying like, oh, we'll never go back to War Memorial Stadium. The game should maybe move back to Saline County or something. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I don't think we need to push the panic button on that. I think that, uh, you know, some things need to be maybe changed a little bit, up, upgrade the security just a little bit, maybe make it even more like a Razorback football game. you got to have a ticket, no walk-up tickets, uh, maybe a little bit more uh, stiffer at the gate with scanning and things like that. But I don't think anybody needs to be scared to go back to War Memorial to, for the Salt Bowl. I think, you know, it's a great event. I mean, it's an awesome environment. You pull up at 4 o'clock on game day, and there's six to 10,000 people tailgating. You don't, you don't get that environment anywhere else but at a Razorback football game. And it's a great feeling for our kids uh, to pull up and see their fans there. They see the Benton and Bryant fans there. It is an amazing environment to pull up on that bus and, and see that. You know, you got some people cheering for you. You got some people hooting on you. You know, so they love that environment. So uh, please don't be scared to come back to War Memorial. I think it'll be a great job. Our administration will make sure things are in check a little bit tighter and all that. I know that, that, that we have great administrations both at Benton and Bryant. So please don't be afraid to do that. You know, going back to the sense of community, you know, we obviously we were getting videos and whatnot and stories that we keep hearing of not only Benton players, but Brian players helping Benton fans or Benton players helping Brian fans, Brian fans helping, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, just what does that say about this community? And it means more than just a football game and a rivalry. Right, most definitely. I mean, they're rivals on the field, but you can tell once they get off the field, they're still friends. Uh, there's a lot of kids that hang out with each other. You know, we got guys that have girlfriends over there, girls that have boyfriends, things like that. You know, so they they hang out together at times, and that was obvious the other night. You know, that it was just one big close knit group of kids. You know, they didn't care what color jersey it was or uniform they had on. Uh, you know, they came together, they rallied together in a tough situation, and they helped each other. You know, throughout that, you know, we we saw many kids walking down the hill. Uh, coming back into the stadium with with blue and maroon together, you know, and it wasn't a division at all. They, you know, they were they were a little intimidated and panicked and scared maybe, but you know they united together and and they stuck together in a tough situation. Security wise, did you notice thing and notice anything that that you maybe wanted improved on? Like we we heard that some people didn't get wanded or or anything like that. You know, I don't know. We, you know, for us as a team, they they let us come in the gate. You know, it's no big deal. Now, now we did have a security person ask us to see see our tags and everything, which we were told that uh, if you as a coaching staff or a member of the team, you didn't need a sideline pass or anything. But they did ask those questions for us. 
I've had some friends that came through the gate said they were not wanted. They were not, their bags were not checked, you know. So, you know, I don't know that. That's not a person, you know, that, that, that didn't happen to me personally. That's just hearsay. But, you know, for us as a team, they, they made sure that we was on the team and, and, and checked like they should, you know. So now with everything that happened Saturday night, you guys return to practice today. How do you get your kids to, to, to move on or, you know, just help them move on from, from I'm sure, a you know, what I don't, I can't even think of the word, you know, traumatic experience from Saturday night. Well, it, it's a first for me, you know, and, and we're going to, we're going to try to handle it as we go. You know, we're going to, we're going to talk about it if we need to, and if it takes five minutes or it takes 35 minutes, uh, but we need to get this behind us. You know, uh, we have a football season, you know, thank God that nobody was hurt seriously, uh, you know, from either community that we're aware of and uh, we're accounted for and safe, you know, and, and we're going to move forward. We have a JV football game tonight that we're going to go ahead on schedule and try to play. Uh, and then we got to go Friday night to Arkadelphia. So we're going to move forward. It may take us a little bit today, uh, but we're going to try to get a, a good film session in after we discuss the situation, uh, film session, and then a walk through with our varsity guys like we would on any typical Monday. And then our JV guys will get ready to play a football game tonight. So it may be a little bit of a slow process, but it's a process that we're going to wade through today. Um, you know, not as, asking for specifics, but have, have there been any players that have come up to you and you kind of needed to help, you know, uh, kind of feel better about the right. situation? Yeah, we had, some, we had some kids that were shook up after the game the other night, you know. We had some kids that were real calm about everything. They helped. They helped a ton of kids, you know, small kids helping them out. But we had a few kids that was really shook up, you know, and each individual kid's differently. You got to handle each individual kid differently with discipline and how they handle their emotions, you know. So, you know, we expect a few kids to be a little rattled today when we get here. It's just we hope that most of them have got it behind them and everything. But like we talked about in a faculty meeting early this morning, uh, you know, we've got to be prepared for that, you know. And, and as a coaching staff, our, our coaches are ready to handle that situation this afternoon when we get our when we get our athletes. Uh, now, is the game at Arkadelphia on Friday or is it here? No, we're at Arkadelphia on Friday. It's at Arkadelphia. Okay. Obviously, that might be one of the games that I might be at on for Fearless Friday on, on Friday. What do you see from the uh, this Badgers squad? Well, they're, they're a very athletic team with team speed from what we saw yesterday watching film and trying to get ready for them and amidst all the chaos that we've been, been dealing with since Saturday night. But a uh, really talented Arkadelphia team. They did lose a lot up front on both offense and defensive lines, it looks like, from last year's team. But a lot of skill, a lot of speed, and Coach Eldridge to have those guys ready. They lost a tough ball game last week against Sylvan Hills in the last minutes. I went down and watched that game, you know. So they're going to be out for a win at their place this week. So we got we got to bring our A game. You know, just talking about the game on Saturday night, what did you like from your team? What did you not like from your team that you guys are going to work on this week? I'll tell you what, I thought we played really well early in the game. Uh, defensively, I thought we that, that I was real pleased with our defensive effort. Offensively, we moved the football, made a few mis mental mistakes that uh, that killed drives for us that we ended up having to punt. Uh, we got a little tired right there before halftime, and uh, then we made a couple. We missed a couple of tackles. We blew an assignment. They got a couple of quick touchdowns on us. You know, uh, I thought it was a really good ball game. Though I, I was looking forward to finishing after halftime. You know, we had the big turnover right there uh, coming out at half, and and they hit us quick. But like I said, a 14-point lead. You know, that don't bother us in the Salt Bowl because we've been there before and our kids were ready to respond to that. But uh, really pleased uh, with our effort and everything. I'll tell you what, Bryant's good. They're really good. They're big and physical up front on both sides of the line. And then they got some speed and athletes in the secondary and at their skill positions.